Okay, fine. Hello, um, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us uh, for this webinar on uh, estimating greenhouse gas emissions from mobility projects. Um, my name is Annika Berlin. Um, I work at the Sustainable Mobility Unit um, based at the UN Environment Program in Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, I'll be guiding the session today. Um, and just, yeah, housekeeping rules. Um, the session is being recorded uh, for others to, to benefit from uh, the input later on and also for you to review uh, if, if you miss parts of the session. Um, you will find the question answer box uh, below that you can use to um, post any questions at any time during this webinar. And the panelists will try to address them as we move along. And if not, uh, at the end of the webinar. Um, and that's also where we'll have time for uh, questions where you can unmute yourself. Um, the, the agenda of today, you see it here on the screen, um, brief um, introduction, then um, we'll talk about uh, MRV mechanisms for mobility projects. Uh, Vincent is going to introduce the mobility calculator for Mobilize Your City. Then my colleague uh, Felipe Kirama will speak about um, the emissions calculator we use at UNEP. Uh, and then there's an open um, space for questions and answers um, where, yeah, again, you'll have the opportunity to unmute and ask questions directly to any of the panelists or in general. Um, and yeah, as you belong, you, you are welcome to put in any questions in the chat. Um, so the objective of today's session is basically to provide some input on uh, capacities for uh, estimating greenhouse gas emissions mobility projects, present some tools that you can use. They are all open and free to use for everyone. Um, and also to highlight why it's important to um, estimate greenhouse gas emissions from electric mobility projects, because we all sort of know and always in the agenda know we, we develop mobility projects to reduce CO2 emissions, but by how much and also how can we sort of frame this in a larger context of climate change mitigation and uh, that will then, of course, also show um, the relevance of these projects and, and activities that we are working on. And yeah, with that, I'd like to um, introduce our uh, speakers for today. So I'm very happy that uh, we have Alvin here with us, Alvin Media from the Urban Electric Mobility Initiative, where he works on, uh, where he did our director for analysis and impact and works on uh, Kentucky data frameworks. Uh, before that, he worked for the Wuppertal Institute for Climate, Environment and Energy based in Germany and at the Sustainable Transit Program of Clean Air Asia. And I think he's always been very um, interested and in doing great work around uh, topics of data quality and mobility, air quality, and working on development projects um, across the globe. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for being, he has a master's degree in, in transport management. So thanks a lot, Alvin for being here. Then as a second speaker, we have uh, Vincent Larondel. Uh, he's the monitoring evaluation and reporting manager at CODA2, um, uh, based at the Secretariat of the Mobilize Your City Partnership uh, in Belgium. Um, and uh, before that, he worked as a data scientist for the European Commission um, and in Dakar, Senegal um, at the Luxembourg Development Agency. Uh, and he likes to cycle. Um, and then uh, as last but not least, we have uh, Philippe Kirama, who is a sustainable mobility consultant at the UN Environment Program. Uh, he's currently based in uh, Colombia, where he focuses on um, uh, setting up our Latin America support investment platform for immobility, uh, but he also works on the topic of used vehicles, uh, clean fuels, and our global immobility program. So thanks a lot uh, to all of you for, for being here. Um, we'll provide the context also later in case you have direct questions, you, you can address the panelists. Um, yeah, and with that, actually, let me right hand it over to Alvin to kick us off with the presentation on MRV. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Annika. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, good morning to, to everyone. So let me just uh, quickly share my screen. So welcome, to, I hope you can, can see it, um, and uh, welcome to the presentation on MRV mechanisms for mobility projects. So my name is Alvin Mejia, and I work uh, with the Urban Electric Mobility Initiative. Um, 
Oh, sorry. Okay, so very quickly, I'll just go through um, an introduction slides, and then we go towards uh, discussing the concept of MRV, and then uh, zooming in into the the MRV of mobility projects, and uh, we'll we'll uh, go ahead with also uh, doing some couple of slides on the summary. So very quickly, I work for the Urban Electric Mobility Initiative, which is the mobility hub of the Urban Living Lab Center. Uh, this uh, center is the first uh, collaboration uh, center of UN Habitat, and uh, it's really about providing a space for collaboration among, you know, implementation-oriented projects in the field of uh, urban climate action. And this co-hosted by the Technical University of Berlin, MIT, Wuppertal Institute, and uh, UN Habitat. And we are uh, involved in uh, the coordination and, you know, in several of the uh, global projects that uh, might be relevant in this uh, discussion. So the first one is the uh, global uh, project, electric mobility project called Solutions Plus, which is the sister project of the, uh, the UNEP uh, Global Electric Mobility uh, Program. I would just like to um, mention that uh, to, you know, to, for you, or invite you to also to look at the website. Uh, we're doing a lot in uh, um, several countries globally. And the second link here, it's the um, e-mobility toolbox, which is a uh, uh, jointly developed uh, product uh, from the Solutions Project and UNEP. Uh, you will find a lot of uh, references there, hopefully useful um, in terms of electric mobility, um, including one uh, the ones that are related to MRV. And I think this uh, webinar is also, let's say, uh, co-hosted or, or co-organized by the CESA project, this, uh, uh, which is a project that is aiming to look into sustainable energy solutions in Africa. So I'd also li like to invite you to check out the, the website here. Um, so yeah, when we talk about MRV, I suppose we just need, also need to look into the history um, of the term. So the term itself was first coined um, under the Bali Action Plan, which was uh, released in 2007. Um, which really called for measurable, reportable, verifiable uh, mitigation commitments or actions. And basically this plan, the Bali Action Plan, emphasizes the urgent need to enhance uh, global efforts to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. And this is where the whole concept of uh, measurement, reporting, verification also plays a role because uh, it also uh, underpins the importance of uh, financial uh, support and technological support from the developing developed countries towards the developing countries. So a lot has to do with, the, let's say, documenting the efforts towards uh, mitigation and, you know, um, looking at how much um, emissions reductions would be achieved by the different efforts here. And subsequently, um, efforts have been made to fill in the details and uh, really define what should be measured, what should be reported, what should be verified, how this is going to be done, by whom or for what purpose. Um, and I would just like also to mention the term MRV. So we talk about the M, which is a measurement or monitoring, uh, the R, which is reporting, the V, the verification. Uh, the term can be used in, in different manners. So we talk about the MRV of emissions in general. So we talk about, um, let's say, national inventories, uh, city inventories, and those that are relating to to entity inventories. So you have companies, you have facilities. Um, but in, in this case, in this presentation, we would uh, focus more on the MRV of the mitigation action. So we, when we talk about, let's say, uh, projects uh, that uh, try to reduce or attempt to reduce uh, emissions from the transportation sector, this is where we, we would be focusing on. Um, essentially, um, yeah, the rational really is to increase, number one, to increase the transparency and uh, clarify the uh, project effectiveness. Uh, so we do estimates um, measure before the project is implemented, and then later we monitor and then do um, ex post uh, assessment after um, the project or the, the initiative has ended. Um, and then we have also, we also need to look into, let's say, the importance of MRB in terms of accessing opportunities for, for finance. So this is where also the different mechanisms have different tools and different requirements for MRB so that they can provide specific support to these uh, projects or interventions. Uh, but aside from that, generally, the MRB process would really enhance planning, implementation, and uh, the, impl the formulation of future projects and future policies. And it's generally, it's really about the promotion of effective measures as well. I would just also like to stress out, like in terms of the emissions mitigation within the mobility or transport sector, again, we talk about the three pillars, the avoid, shift, improve framework. So the first one is the avoidance of the need to travel. 
um, through, let's say, the organization of land use, which would then be reflected in the, the calculations, for example, in terms of reduction of uh, passenger or freight activity. And then we also look into measures that try to shift the activity into more energy efficient modes, such as public transport, non-motorized transport, which is really about shifting the, the, the passenger kilometers, ton kilometers to these modes. And then lastly, we have the improved measures, which is about uh, improving the efficiency of vehicles and fuels. Uh, we also have your things like uh, electrification, for example. So in a nutshell, the different, let's say, main steps uh, that uh, are involved in the, the MRV of mitigation interventions are in this table. Um, in terms of defining the action, the pro policy or project, so what, what is the intervention about, and then we identify the, the impacts. We do, um, let's say, a uh, causal chain analysis, what would this project bring in terms of the, the impacts it may uh, uh, gather in terms of the activity, in terms of emission factors. Um, we try to define the boundaries, try to define the significant impacts, and then do some sort of measurement. So again, ex ante emissions assessment, the uh, emissions impact assessment before the project is done. In most cases, it's also needed for um, get, um, getting, you know, let's say, uh, financial support from different mechanisms. We identify key performance indicators. We monitor over time. So we do come up with a monitoring plan in most cases. And then later on, we do an ex post assessment. So once um, the project is done, we do, um, let's say, we revise the calculations, we uh, verify the results and report the results based on the, uh, the methodologies that are used. So yeah, um, again, this is just a graphical depiction, the depiction of what the, we had discussed in the previous slide. So uh, before the project, we do ex ante measurement, we develop um, what a scenario where in the project or intervention is uh, implemented. So let's say in terms of CO2 or other emissions, for example, and then we um, juxtapose that against a baseline scenario. Uh, what would have happened if the project would not be there um, within the time frame of the project? And then later on, once the project is done, uh, so yeah, during the project implementation, we can reduce um, monitoring and incrementally there could be re reporting requirements, verification requirements, again, depending on the mechanism. And then later on, we do an ex post measurement and then we, um, the final verification reporting would be done. Um, very quickly, um, just to put it into context, there are, let's say, two different approaches in terms of looking into uh, transport emissions in general. So we have the top-down approach and the bottom-up approach. So the top-down approach is primarily, let's say, um, something that is driven by a final fuel consumption, fuel sales uh, data, which is primarily used, for example, in a lot of the developing country um, uh, national inventories, which is uh, quite uh, basic, but it's uh, reliable in that sense because the, the fuel statistics um, is based on, um, let's say, um, establish the protocols, but we do have the bottom-up approach, which is also needed in terms of looking at the um, emissions impacts. So again, when top-down, it's just really about you know, uh, simplified approach looking at, the, let's say, the total fuel consumed in a transportation system. Um, it is useful, again, in a sense that it is based on, let's say, records that have been established uh, quite well. Uh, you have maybe specific leakages in terms of those records, but it would give you a good uh, estimate in terms of the overall, let's say, uh, system um, emissions, for example, at the national level, in some cases at the city level as well. Um, but when we look at you know, what the impacts might be uh, of a certain project, of a certain in intervention, it's always normally required to have um, a disaggregated uh, approach, uh, which is the ASIF framework. Uh, we disaggregate the, the emissions based on the parameters such as activity. So we talk about passenger and freight activity, passenger kilometers, freight kilometers. We talk about the structure, the modal share by which the, the activity is uh, performed. So how much of the PKMs are done by cars, by uh, motorcycles, uh, by buses, et cetera. Uh, what would be the emissions intensity of these vehicles, which is also a function of the vehicles per se and the operational characteristics. And we also look at the, the factor of emissions of the different fuels that are used in uh, fueling up or powering these vehicles. Um, but once we have that, we can now juxtapose the, the 
avoid shift improve uh, sort of um, uh, framework so that we can um, reflect in the calculations how um, these projects can uh, influence the emissions later on. I won't go through much in detail for this one, but it's essentially uh, yeah, an example. Um, so for example, if you have um, an electric vehicle project, you might need, uh, yeah, you need to figure out at the ex ante um, um, calculations what the vehicle activity or the passenger or freight activity might be for this project vehicles. Um, and then you monitor it throughout the project. Same with the energy consumption and the, let's say, the grid emission factors. You may use some sort of assumptions based on, let's say, the, the vehicles themselves, if there are compatible vehicles. And then you also uh, come up or develop the baseline scenario. What would have happened if the project vehicles are not there? Um, in some cases, you can um, use existing stud studies. In some cases, you would need to do um, um, a detailed, let's say, passenger surveys uh, to capture, let's say, modal shifting. Um, and this is the point, like uh, the whole concept of MRV, MRV itself uh, should be taken into context in terms of the different uh, mechanisms that they are applied to. So it could be in terms of, uh, you know, um, applying for carbon credits for, from different carbon markets, mandatory ones that are have been established by the Kyoto Protocol, which are quite rigorous in terms of the requirements. You had to have the voluntary carbon markets as well. Um, but it can also be a process that is entailed in terms of applying for support in um, climate finance support mechanisms, such as the mitigation facility, GEF, IKI, uh, climate investment funds, uh, green climate funds. So there are differences in terms of the, the requirements for accuracy, in terms of monitoring, in terms of, let's say, the, the periods, the scope, the boundaries, uh, types of emissions that are going to be uh, captured. So all these sorts of uh, uh, different nuances. Uh, a couple of uh, examples, for example, um, in, in relation to the previous slide, so in terms of BUS, uh, BAU, the business as usual estimation, um, as you can see on the, the right side of the screen, this is just a comparison of the different requirements as, you know, when we talk about the clean development mechanism methodologies, as opposed to the requirements of the GEF, as opposed to the requirements of the uh, CTF. So it could be, you know, a simple approach based on previous projects, studies, and you, you you, you get the default values from uh, some of these guiding uh, documents. Um, but in some cases, especially again, with the project specific clean development mechanism methodologies be really um, uh, detailed in terms of looking at, you know, establishing passenger surveys, uh, and all these sorts of uh, different things just to get into the uh, ex ante estimate and also in terms of monitoring and the ex post uh, evaluation, but they need to adhere to the specific guidelines that you are using it in. And also in terms of the types of emission impacts, uh, for example, for the Jeff project, transport projects, uh, the guidelines themselves say that you know there are, would be um, um, could be direct emission reduction, but um, re reductions from let's say components that deal with demonstration projects within the Jeff projects. There could be indirect impacts from things like capacity building, market facilitation, um, and uh, direct post-project impacts, uh, which are primarily um, related to financing mechanisms that are um, part of the, the Jeff project itself. But uh, all these um, are also included in the guidelines, uh, the Jeff guidelines, if you would like to have a look at that. I won't go into the slide, I just wanted to show, that, yeah, they, they have a specific, let's say, flow chart for evaluating which ones and how um, the, to, to measure and report uh, these things for the Jeff. Um, in terms of uh, different methodologies, um, you'll find uh, project-specific methodologies, for example, uh, under the CDM um, mechanism, like for bus systems, BRD, mass transit uh, systems, um, fuel switching, electrification, for example. A lot of differences in terms of applicability, in terms of the logic for emissions reductions, uh, looking at things like leakages, uh, looking at monitoring me methods, uh, et cetera. And here you, you'll find a lot of the different tools that are available. A lot of the different tools in terms of uh, calculations would be aligned definitely with the, the IPCC guidelines or national greenhouse gas inventories, which also flow into, let's say, the, the suit of the GHG protocol, which looks into cities, which looks into facilities, entities, um, which you could also use in you know, getting default values if you're doing um, impact uh, emissions impact estimation. So a lot of these things can be useful. If you're looking to very specific fleet 
um, measures. So, um, and if you're looking at national level interventions, for example, you can use the the Coppert model, the Moves model, but you would need um, you know very heavy data to 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 use these uh, types of tools. Again, you have the CDM tools that are available online. The Jeff guidelines, which come with the transport emission evaluation model for projects, so I just wanted to highlight it here in the on the right. So these are a sort of easy to use tools for different sorts of projects, such as uh, bike sharing, walkability, BRT, MRT, road uh, improvements. So yeah, you can download this from the Jeff website as well, and as well as a different uh, uh, tools. For example, the MYC calculator would also be uh, discussed later, and the UNEP e-mobility calculators. So very quickly on the reporting and verification. Uh, the most important things is again situating this on the mechanisms that's being applied who to report to who verifies it could vary in terms of let's say um, to domestic local stakeholders to your international donors to your review committees or um, evaluation departments and what to report or what is to be verified again it's it depends on the objectives um, and the mechanism itself there could be a um, high level long-term estimate verification, or in some cases, um, there could be verification even of the input uh, data and the monitored data that has been generated. And it could also be, uh, yeah, um, um, looking into different metrics, not just uh, greenhouse gas um, metrics in general. So this one I would leave, um, uh, and then we'll share the presentation. I won't go through the, the different uh, requirements and uh, frequencies, but uh, just to say that, again, it's uh, the different sorts of requirements and the processes that uh, uh, need to be considered um, for these sorts of uh, um, procedures. And in summary, again, it's uh, MRV should be a concept that uh, needs to be situated within the context of the mechanism or the purpose it's being applied to. Um, because there are fundamental fundamental differences in, in these different mechanisms. Um, but in essence, it's really about facilitating enhanced action uh, towards sustainability in the sector, which should really not uh, hinder such action. So we, we try to avoid, let's say, paralysis by, by analysis. Um, but it's, again, it's really not just useful for looking at THG impacts, but looking at the project per se, looking at the effectiveness, looking at the implementation. And there are a lot of different uh, resources and tools that are available and lastly, it is a process that needs to involve a lot of the different uh, stakeholders so when you're doing the project um, and also in terms of monitoring, in terms of reporting and in terms of verification. So I hope I did not eat too much time. Thank you very much for your patience. Thanks a lot, Alvin. No, I I think it's really hard to to <laughs> condense all this wealth of information in 15 minutes. Uh, thanks for for trying. <laughs> uh, very interesting. Uh, I put some of the links already in the chat, and uh, we'll share the presentation later, where you then can live click on all the links and also go a bit more into detail. Because yeah, I understand it's it's quite a lot of information in in a very short amount of time, and I think spend the whole training on this. But I think um, it's also great because now actually Vincent, I think is also going to sort of add to that, but also go a bit detail, like how this is going to be applied no, in, in some case studies. Um, and therefore, let me not take any more time and head over to you, Vincent, if you to share your screen. And yeah, uh, again, you can put any questions in the chat or Q&A box. Thanks. Thank you very much. So first, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and thank you very much, Alvin, also for uh, this great presentation that uh, I think gave a uh, also a great framework to what I'm going to present. Hopefully there will not be too many repetitions, um, but indeed we are going to uh, modestly uh, speak about a tool that is uh, embedded in this framework that was just uh, presented by Alvin and, and can help uh, the like stakeholders willing to, uh, to do this ex ante assessment of um, impact of urban mobility plans, for example, for greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, both at national or uh, city level. First, I'm just going to say a word about the Mobilize Your City Partnership. For those who don't know us already, this is a page with all the logos. Uh, so it's a partnership that brings together donors, implementing partners, and other more technical organization and working groups. We are mostly financed by AFD, the European, uh, by France through AFD, by the European Union, and by uh, Germany to uh, their ministry. And the tools that I'm going to present here is uh, has been like the recent updates have been uh, financed by AFD and by the German Ministry of Environment. Uh, we work on 
supporting our city and country members in transitioning towards sustainable mobility uh, around the globe and mostly in the cities and countries that are here uh, displayed on the slide. Uh, so first of all, uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction is uh, one of one of our impact indicators we hope to contribute to um, through our support to transitioning to our sustainable urban mobility. Um, and this is just part of the standard way of thinking of it. Uh, our projects uh, need to report uh, like a future uh, contribution to this uh, uh, to this indicator, and we we like to just show in practice how it looks like in the publication that we um, we do. So we want to be able to report on the absolute value, like the number of tons of CO two equivalent that will be spared by taking action. And I will uh, give some examples later. And then the difference between the business as usual or the sustainable urban mobility plan or, um, or policy, which is here uh, displayed. And we also try to aggregate the, like the, the targeted impact of all our projects at the partnership level. So this slide just shows three, like three different situations where uh, the where this assessment is needed in our work. First of all, when we do a sustainable mobility plan for a city or a policy at the national level, we want first to have a diagnosis. This is exactly the same as doing a GHG emission inventory for the urban mobility sector. So on the right of the slide, you see a little graph with the, with the time series. A second phase would be to do future projections. That was uh, the Exante projection Alvin uh, mentioned. And that is all uh, enabled by the tool that I'm going to present just after. Um, in red, you would see here the business as usual scenario, which is projection based on assumption that we would not do the project or uh, implement the sustainable mobility plan. And then the SUMP, which is the acronym for sustainable urban mobility plan that you might see uh, of times further in the presentation. There is then uh, the third case, which is like monitoring implementation. And this is uh, not shown here in the graph. Um, this is where uh, we would need another approach, uh, which is like, uh, which was mentioned in the Alvin's presentation on MRV, like monitoring actual progress. One way to do it with the tool the calculator uh, would be to read then repeat the first phase, like the diagnosis or the greenhouse gas emission inventory based on actual measurements. Uh, and then you would draw a line with the actual progress and then compare it with the extensive projection that you did at the moment when the plan was adopted or prepared. Uh, I will maybe not go in details on this slide, but uh, you can find examples of this reporting of uh, ex-ante projections of impact for our projects in our uh, annual report, uh, which is called the Global Monitor. And after the presentation, I will put the link in the slide. And for all the SUMP, uh, so the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plans or policy that have been uh, adopted or prepared, uh, you would then see in the fact sheet how many uh, how much um, greenhouse gas emissions would be spared uh, if uh, the plan was going to be implemented according to the projections. Um, so this is how it would look like in the, in the actual report. And this is interesting for any donor or partner uh, and especially for financing institution, this helps cities or uh, partner countries to access uh, financing, such as it has been mentioned in the pre previous presentation. Uh, this is a short section just to add uh, two different assumptions that we, we want to make before using the tool uh, in our approach is first we use the ASI approach, so the avoid shift improve. Uh, this has been already mentioned by Alvin. Um, the, measures 
uh, aimed at avoiding uh, greenhouse gas emissions through to, like, avoiding the need of transportation or uh, so we can understand it both on the, the need for a trip or the need for a certain distance of a trip. So if you can replace your, um, your trip to a further location by a, a walking trip to a shorter distance, this would in our, in our approach also count as an avoid. Then the shift is you can do the same trip like your passengers or uh, goods can do the same trip but using a mode of transport that is uh, less um, this more efficient in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions or improve the same mode of transport that are going to be used through for example uh, improving the motorization vehicle efficiency uh, improve the traffic or else another uh, point that is uh, just a prerequisite before using the tool is uh, what is, are the boundaries of a model? So we are speaking of a, a model and the idea is to include all the vehicle kilometer or the passenger kilometer done uh, within the boundaries of the study, which is, for example, here as shown in the, in the slide, the city. Uh, this can also be the national territory, of course. But all the part of the trips or the trips that are outside of this perimeter are not accounted. Um, now, maybe that is the more interesting part, which is like actually presenting uh, the emissions calculator itself. I will not show the, the tool in Excel because it's just a very big Excel file at the moment. Uh, but I will also share the link so that you can explore it uh, on, on your end. So it's a, it's a tool that is intended to help local, regional, and national authorities in developing country, uh, in developing countries, sorry, to calculate greenhouse gas emissions profile from transport on an annual basis. So it's just a calculator. It's based on transport data, such as um, I will show in the, in the next slide. So what does it actually deliver? It's bottom-up calculations. Um, Alvin explained the difference between bottom-up calculations, but that means it's based on activity, uh, transport activity. Um, for road and rail transport, uh, greenhouse gas uh, for the road and, road and rail transport related greenhouse gas emissions, either at city or country level in our geographies. And we can use it, as I explained, both in the inventory uh, or baseline situation, to do business as usual projections or to project a climate scenario based on some measures um, or assumptions. So this is all included in the tool. You would not need to run the tool different times. It's uh, the, three, the three aspects are basically uh, included in the tool. And it's interesting because then the tool also presents like some ready to use graphs uh, that can be used to promote the impact that will uh, that the project or the plan will have. Um, there are a few more technical notes here uh, down the slide, which are, are available for, for you to, to read or to ask questions on, but I will just go a bit further. Uh, so as I mentioned, the tool does not calculate it, like the, does not do projections based on uh, uh, any assumption, but mostly uh, on transport uh, activity data. Um, I also forgot to mention on socio and economic data, uh, which are mainly important to do projections for the business as usual and climate scenario. So uh, you would need, of course, the population number of inhabitants, the population growth rate, the, the, the growth of the GDP and such. And on the transport uh, demand or transport activity side, you would then need the uh, total annual vehicle kilometer travel by vehicle, the so VKT growth, uh, then the disaggregation by fuel type and by, uh, of course, by mode of transport. Uh, you also need information for the fleet, etc. It is to be noted that gathering all these data is a real challenge for our partners, and we have done. Uh, some work with the uh, with our partners the over the past few months to propose in the next version that is upcoming some orientation data or examples that will help uh, users who do not have may who have some data gaps to find proxies maybe and still be able to use the tool. Uh, 
but overall, it's clear for us and for the ones who have used the tool that the data collection is the most work intensive part of using it. Um, so this is slide showing a bit more uh, the content of it. Uh, maybe I should not go too much into details here because I basically said it uh, before, maybe just, uh, just on the output side, which is here, uh, bottom of the slide, uh, the overview of results after in including all the data that uh, are needed to use the model. Um, show indicators of uh, transport performance, uh, the total mileage done uh, by uh, the different mode of transport, the modal split. It's also useful even if um, not for the sake of greenhouse gas emissions to have this data presented in a way uh, at the city or the country level. It's It can be, uh, these intermediary results are of an added value by themselves if they are not already um, presented or, or known in a, in a way that is uh, useful for partners, donors, or, or the national government, for example. Um, I would then just show a, a small example of the type of output that you can get out of the, of the calculator if you're using it. So uh, this example is from Antofagasta uh, in Chile, which is um, a partner city of Mobilize City who just, uh, recently adopted its sustainable urban mobility plan. They have a uh, great ambition for uh, walking and cycling, and uh, they have used the greenhouse gas emissions to uh, to do the XMT impact assessment of their sustainable mobility plan. Um, so they were able to first, as the inventory part, uh, quantify the contribution of each mode to the total uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, related to transport. Uh, of course, you can also, uh, this is a detail uh, of just assessing the, the total amount uh, of greenhouse gas emissions due to urban mobility locally. Uh, of course, it's, it's in Spanish here, uh, or the individual cars uh, in, in dark greenish brown, you can see the uh, light commercial vehicles and in gray, the like the trucks and buses. And the other thing that they could do, for example, is uh, show this kind of easy to look at results um, of comparing uh, two different scenarios. So you can see the BAU business as usual and climate scenarios uh, side by side. And in purple um, are the emissions related to the uh, to passenger transport and in gray to uh, freight transport. Here in this example, you can see that they didn't really include in the model any uh, measure related to freight. So in the, in the two scenarios, the freight is the same, like uh, emits the same amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Of course, this is just because it's a model. It will not be like that in the future, but it's because they didn't include any assumption related to freight in their model. However, you can see a very big impact um, of their plan, like an expected impact of their plan on the greenhouse gas emissions related to passenger transport. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, we have, like, we know that the emissions calculator is being used in uh, in a certain number of uh, countries, and hopefully, uh, this uh, this number will grow as the tool uh, improves uh, gradually and gets more and more popular. Hopefully. Uh, you can, I will send a few links in the chat after my presentation, but you can find some resources on our knowledge platform. Uh, of course, the tool itself is free to download. You can find a user manual, a video tutorial, a methodological approach. If you are not in a hurry, I would advise to wait a couple of weeks before downloading this, uh, uh, these tools because we are um, in the process of publishing a new version. And here are the, some details. So the tool is currently still being developed. So the version 1.4 is the currently available version on our website. Um, but the version 1.5, which is uh, the one we are preparing, 
enable the users to define their own mode of transport, which is very useful in the global south, especially for what we call paratransit or informal transport, which is this diversity of modes of transport that are really specific locally um, and, and very often quite informal. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, also uh, delivered some orientation and example data for emissions factor and occupancy rate. Uh, maybe I can also use this occasion to uh, reply to a question on uh, car pooling that was uh, uh, done in the chat. Uh, but for example, in the projection, you would then use both the expected growth or evolution of transport demand for passenger and um, and adapt the occupancy rate of cars in the model based on what are the assumptions for uh, the rising popularity of car pooling, for example. And this will, uh, in consequence, uh, in the model, decrease the vehicle kilometers done by car. Um, so this is, these are the main points uh, for the new version that is uh, going to be delivered by the end of the month, I think. I hope I was not too long. I don't see the, the time, but I think it was okay-ish. Um, but I stay at, uh, available for any question that you may have. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to the secretariat and I will also add my personal um, email address for, uh, for any question that you may have uh, later. Thank you very much. Great, thanks a lot. No, it's good to see that there are so many resources out there and also that it's been tested already across the globe in so many different regions and I think for me it's always most useful to see concrete examples where uh, these tools have been used uh, to learn and apply them in, in my own project so thanks a lot for, for sharing this and also uh, for your contact um, and now let me hand over to Felipe one more time Felipe are you with us yes thanks Uh, I hope you can see my screen right now. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. So, um, good morning, good afternoon for, for all the participants. Uh, my name is Felipe Kirama. I work for the Regional Support and Investment Platform for Electric Mobility. Uh, this is a project, uh, this is a, a, a platform that is part of the Global Electric Mobility Program. And in Latin America is being implemented by Centro de Movilidad Sostenible um, and by Yenep. And today I will present about a, how to use the e-mobility calculator tool uh, to measure uh, the costs and benefits of electric mobility uh, projects. Uh, I really appreciate that uh, Alvin and Vincent made the, their, their presentation before me because they have been covering a lot of uh, concepts that uh, now you can uh, use for implementing uh, uh, the unit electric mobility calculator. So as I said before, um, this uh, webinar is organized between the uh, LAC regional platform uh, and Africa regional platform and CESA and CMS in order to provide some tools uh, to the uh, country that are planning to develop uh, electric mobility projects or sustainable mobility projects. And in this case, this presentation, it, it has a specific focus on electric mobility. And from this platform, we are developing different activities like capacity building sessions and supporting the development of roadmap and strategy. Also uh, <clears throat> providing support for developing national policy frameworks business model and financial schemes, and last but not least, pilot, pilots project in, on different countries. And now talking specifically about the electric mobility calculator. Uh, and first, I would like to mention that um, this calculator, uh, it was the tool that we use for uh, assessing the um, impact of or the, yeah, the impact of uh, electric mobility projects for and the Jeff, so uh, for the Jeff seven um, call, uh, and in this case, um, <clears throat> I've been mentioned that, for example, this is one of the this is one of the requirements that most of these projects uh, establish at the at, at at the at the beginning of the of all the projects. So establish a an estimation of the impact of the projects is very important for developing any type of proposals. So the calculator is available in, in this link. We already put also the link in the in the chat box. And the 
uh, objective of the calculator is basically to calculate uh, at, uh, in the short, medium, and long term the environment, energy, and economic benefits of uh, implementing electric mobility projects. And basically to do that, we, we need to develop two scenarios. So, so we need to uh, provide input data for a business as usual scenario and for an electric mobility scenario. And the business as usual scenario must take into account not only the uh, electric mobility policies that will be implemented in, in, the, in the short term, but also uh, complementary policies like pollutant emissions, uh, energy efficiency policies, fuel quality policies. Um, and this is the kind of information that we will put on the on the uh, electromobility calculator. So how it works? Uh, this is a this is a, a tool that was developed on uh, in, on Microsoft Excel. Basically, the idea is that every most of the people can access to to this to this tool through using Microsoft. And uh, what we need to provide that as an input data is socioeconomic data. The 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 GDP, the GDP numbers and the population of, of the countries or the city where we would like to um, <clears throat> estimate the greenhouse gas impacts of electric mobility projects. But also we need to provide vehicle stock and vehicle sales and uh, techno-economical vehicle parameters, like for example, the amount of kilometers that a vehicle on average travel per year, the fuel economy value, um, uh, in some cases, uh, the the number of passengers that uh, on average travel in a type of vehicle, and if we put it if we put this input data on the calculator, we will obtain from from the calculator uh, the future composition or the future share of vehicle stock by technology, uh, the energy savings uh, um, from the electric mobility project. And also the the uh, emissions reduction, the greenhouse gas emissions reduction, but also we have some numbers for uh, particulate matter and NOx uh, after implement for the baseline scenario and for the electro mobility scenario. So here is a, a, a picture of how the uh, electro mobility uh, tool looks like. But I, I will move to an Excel file after after the presentation, just to give you an, <clears throat> an overview of how it looks in, in the Excel file. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the input data that we need to uh, run the, the electric mobility calculator is related with socioeconomic parameters. So we need to provide uh, GDP uh, numbers. So we prefer to do it in terms of uh, power, um, power priority purchase. Uh, the PP, uh, PPP, sorry, um, and um, we need to provide also a population and the annual growth uh, of the GDP. Uh, and with these parameters, what we what we do basically is to forecast the size of the vehicle uh, fleet, the size of the vehicle sales uh, in the in, in before 2050. And also uh, with the the other the other type of parameter that we need to run the calculator is is uh, vehicle fleet parameter. So we need to provide information for vehicle stock, vehicle sales, uh, the technology um, that uh, we have in the vehicle in the vehicle fleet. Uh, numbers, for example, about the current recharging infrastructure, the the amount of chargers and the percentage of chargers that uh, are slow chargers and fast chargers, and the uh, op uh, operational data, like for example, and the annual mileage, the load factor, technical life, um, uh, fuel economy. Um, we also need to take into account that uh, the 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 fuel comes the fuel consumption or the energy consu consumption will change in terms of of uh, uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of year. So we need to put like a percentage percentage of improvement. For the fuel consumption or energy consumption, and there is a gap between the the value that we find uh, from type approval test and the real energy or fuel consumption. So we need to put there some uh, percentage. Uh, normally, we use around thirty percent for uh, these uh, calculations. And uh, I already mentioned that uh, <clears throat> what uh, we do for establish the um, 
uh, potential reductions in terms of greenhouse gases and also in terms of energy. It's to compare two scenarios. So we have the benchmark scenario and we have the immobility scenario. And for both, we need to provide uh, some data. So for both, we need to provide the technology share of the vehicle sales. The idea is to have like a, a, a a considerable uh, difference between the immobility, uh, the electric vehicles in the immobility scenario in comparison with the benchmark scenario. And we need to provide also information about uh, the well to tank and tank to wheel um, CO2, uh, CO2 footprint, uh, the vehicle fleet emission standards for both the scenarios, the fuel quality standards uh, and information about uh, vehicle prices, maintenance and fuel prices. And if there is any, um any plan to uh, change also the business scenario to uh, in comparison with the electric mobility scenario when we talk about for example a uh, charging infrastructure so the, this is the the a simple way to to see the calculation process for it's more complex than this but this is like a a, a simple picture of what the electric mobility calculator does so if we provide, for example, a GDP and population information, uh, we uh, with the econ with the with the with the economic growth uh, and um, the current trend of the population, we calculate these two variables until 2050, and with this information, we also calculate the project vehicle sales and the stock. Uh, between the current year and until 2015. So uh, in this case, uh, after having these, these, these results, we provide information about the uh, scenario. We define the scenario, the, the, the business as usual and the electric mobility. And for both the scenario, we, we make the following uh, calculations or the following assessment. We calculate vehicle sales, vehicle retirements and vehicle stock until 2050. And with the mileage also coming, uh, we can calculate the vehicle traffic activity by different technologies. And, and if we also take into account that we are providing fuel economy values, we can compute the energy used by vehicle technology until 2050. And with this information, we can, we can have um, the trends and the behaviors of well-to-wheel uh, CO2 emissions, but also we uh, we are uh, computing the particulate matter and NOx emission until 2015, and the other the other uh, kind of information that you can obtain from the electric mobility is the total cost of ownership by technology. So here uh, we present uh, like an example of how the uh, the kind the kind of result that we can obtain from the electric mobility calculator. So we have uh, in this case. Um, uh, Two scenarios. We have the benchmark scenario where you can see the the share of uh, internal combustion engine vehicles is higher in comparison with the electric mobility scenario. So, for example, in this case, the, the internal combustion gasoline vehicles uh, have a fifty six percent in comparison, for example, with um, uh, the electric mobility scenario where they only have 70%, 17%, and the participation of electric vehicles is higher in this case, around 30%, close to 30%. So with the electric mobility calculator, what we do is, <clears throat> what we do is basically to forecast the GDP until 2050 and the population until 2050. And with this information, we can also forecast um, the, the vehicle stock, vehicle sales and, and, and retirement. And this is because there is a close connection between the uh, income and the economic growth of the country and also the population. So if, if both variables increase, at some point there is an increase in the, in the, in the vehicle fleet. So with this, two, with this information, we can also uh, obtain this kind of, of results. So we have, for example, here, the light duty vehicle stock by technology. So we can see, for example, that in the benchmark scenario, the stock of internal combustion vehicles is higher in comparison with the uh, electric mobility scenario, but also the opposite uh, the opposite uh, it's happening here the participate the share of uh, uh, battery electric vehicles is higher and the particip the, the share of um, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles is higher in the electric mobility scenario and that's for sure has an impact in terms of energy so if we compare for example the amount of energy 
that we use in the benchmark scenario is much higher, in this case, close to for 14 million of uh, liters of gasoline equivalent in comparison with the uh, 9 million of liters of gasoline equivalent in the electromobility scenario. So we have we can compare uh, scenarios in terms of energy, and also we can compare scenarios, as I mentioned before, in terms of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And in this case, we take into account not only the tank to wheel, but also the well to tank uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So. For example, in this case, the, the one that we present as an example, uh, we have a value of around 40,000 uh, 40, uh, 40, tons of uh, uh, CO2. And in the electromobility scenario that we modulate, uh, we have something around 20, 29,000 tons of, of CO2. And the other information that you can obtain from the electromobility is the total cost of ownership. So you can see, for example, uh, the the trends and and the behavior of some uh, operational costs like like maintenance like vehicle like the uh, fuel cost and for sure the total cost of ownership and so in this case you can see that in one in one case the ben the benchmark scenario case we have a, a value around seventy while in the other one we have a value close to sixty five so. Uh, this is the 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 kind of results that we can obtain. So just let me jump very quickly to uh, where you can find the electromobility calculator. It's uh, in this link that we already share with you. But I would like to highlight that there are three different files. So you have one for um, when you want to um, evaluate two and three wheelers, two and three electric wheelers project one for uh, electric buses and one for light duty vehicles. So you choose which one you want to download. And this is the way that you can, uh, this, is the, this is the file that you download. So you have here the input tab and you can provide uh, uh, the different the, the values for the GDP and population, uh, the vehicle stock and so on. Uh, it's it, all the information that you need to provide is in the input data. And then you have here the output graphs where you can obtain the different graphs that you would like to uh, use for your own um, for your own project. So um, I think this is all from my side, and maybe um, we can move to the Q and A session. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. Yeah, no, thanks a lot, Felipe, um, for also for showing um, where uh, we can find the resources, and I think. This also answers one of the questions we had uh, in the chat from uh, Remy about uh, how if the tool can also help to um, compare the emission reduction moving from uh, diesel buses to electric buses. And as you shared, there's a, there's a specific sheet just for, for the bus calculations. I think that Remy would probably be very useful um, for, for that. And then um, I see there's a question here from uh, Samia. Um, about emission reductions from e-bikes um, as an alternative mode of travel. Um, and I think Vincent, you offered that you could uh, maybe give an answer to this. And I'm also very curious about that topic because I just got an e-bike. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I'm sorry. I clicked on the respond in like a reply directly while I wanted to input a, an answer. But anyway, I think uh, uh, the question was already probably uh, or fully um, answered by Alvin in the in the chat. However, maybe I can add something on the, maybe not specifically on e-bikes, but on the uh, life cycle analysis. Uh, of course, this is an assumption that you would have to make uh, at some point. And like in the case of the mobilized emissions calculator approach, uh, we have uh, taken the approach of not including uh, like the investment uh, cost also in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, this is totally debatable, uh, but it's, I think it's a, it's also very important questions for, for example, public transport infrastructure. Uh, if you're building a large scale infrastructure, the greenhouse gas emissions of uh, the, the construction will certainly um, like not be neglectable, uh, but it's a choice to be made at some point of where where to put the line uh, on the on the total uh, like on the on the greenhouse gas emissions uh, assessment, right? So in our model, it's not included. 
it might be in the future, but at the moment it's not. And same would be for new vehicles, uh, be them like e-bikes or just new buses or new cars. Uh, it's a it's a very good question, but it's not really answered on our side at the moment. Okay, thanks. And I think, yeah, also thanks to Alvin who already answered um, many of the questions in the chat. Um, what I take from this is the importance of doing user surveys, no, to to estimate sort of the 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 modal shift. But maybe Alvin, if you wanted to to add something here, because we had a similar question also about car sharing. So very nice Indeed, the questions yes. coming about sharing modes. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, um, in terms of the the general guidance, so I guess like the I just encourage everyone to have a look at the the Jeff guidelines and the uploaded the uh, transport emission evaluation model for projects. So there's one that is specific to bike sharing. So the way these things work is very simple, um, minimalistic in terms of let's say um, uh, data requirements. It's really meant for let's say the Jeff applications uh, first cut. Uh, types of uh, estimation uh, processes. A lot has to do to do also with, let's say, the the modal shifting, which is very important. But it recognizes the fact that a lot of, let's say, the cities or the proponents wouldn't have the data, particularly when it comes to the ex ante estimation. So. I guess the guidelines per se, which was also approved by Jeff, um, it is quite flexible in terms of, let's say, utilizing uh, existing mode shares and or um, uh, data from other similar projects that have been implemented either in the country or in the region. So uh, it depends on the justification um, that is being used by the proponents um, on how, um, let's say, usable these uh, default values or borrowed values are. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit flexible in that sense um, in terms of um, doing the ex ante estimates. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, and I realized we're already over time, but just a reminder, maybe next time we'll do again 19 minutes because the, there's a lot of uh, good questions also. Um, and we still have about 50 people here. But um, I think just um, what Alvin just said that it sometimes looks very complicated and it's often depending on for who are you calculating these two zero two missions. Is it just for your own purpose? Do you want to know what's the impact of your project or is it for a specific donor such as the Jeff or others? Then of course there might be other requirements depending on who are reporting these emissions for. I think that's or maybe to target also then some of being overwhelmed by all the data that needs to be collected. And um, yeah, there's there's lots of tools out there. Um, we've shared most of the links in the chat. I will share the presentations after this as well. And you have also our contact if there are um, any, any specific questions. Also, Vincent offered to share the example of Antago Fasta in Chile for those of you that uh, speak Spanish uh, or want to use Google Translate. Um, and um, yeah, also just from, from UNEP's side, uh, from the Africa Supports Investment Platform for Mobility, if there's any other topics you feel like uh, it would be worth having another webinar on, or if there's anything we didn't cover here, or you think there's uh, more uh, more room for uh, presentations, discussions, uh, just uh, send me an, an email. I'll, I'll put my email also quickly in the chat in case uh, you don't have it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, with that, we are also happy about feedback. And I thank you all for staying with us, even five minutes of our time. And many thanks, especially to, to Vincent, Ivan, and Filippo for these great and insightful presentations and for answering the questions in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, more questions. Again, I'm putting uh, our UNEP mobility address in the chat. Uh, please, uh, you can send them uh, my way and then I'll direct them to uh, any of the experts in the room. Uh, thanks a lot for being with us and I wish you a great rest of your day. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Much.